Hello, this is Jane Taylor. I'm an improvement advisor with the Surviving Sepsis Campaign, sponsored by the Society of Critical Care Medicine. And uh, today I want to talk to you about using measurement for spread. So the lessons learned today for this presentation come from IHI's Lessons Learned from Ghana's Project Bites Alive. I'd like to acknowledge that. So when we're thinking about spread, at the very beginning, it's important to set up the norm that we're going to be using measurement, and that measurement is used to understand improvement. It's a learning tool. How do you make that the norm? Well, whenever you start a meeting to discuss the project, the first thing to do is to ask for data. That's most important so that you set the expectation that data is reviewed at every meeting. Also, uh, data helps us appreciate how we can create a shared language. It gives us a way to talk about changes. It gives us a method to learn and a way to challenge each other because we're looking at the data and the data will spark questions. So we're going to create a norm that we use data and then we're going to use data to help shape a shared language to talk about, discuss, learn, and challenge each other. Sound measurement systems actually do a lot to build teamwork. And not only that, but they'll build spirit and pride in work because as a team sees their changes turn into improvement and actually see that reflected in the data, it gives them pride in their work. It supports and spurs their team on. And it actually then later makes it possible to publish your results and to understand if you're holding the gains after you've implemented a project. So there is a strategy for all and that is to create a measurement strategy for every level of spread work. And that means whether it's on a particular unit, at the hospital level, and at the system level. So as you're implementing changes to um, assess patients uh, for sepsis, and to respond to patients that are developed are becoming septic, it's important to have a measurement strategy that captures that. And that's at the unit level. And then uh, as you spread across units to make sure that you can roll that data up and look at the entire hospital. And if you're moving across hospitals, you'll want to also set system level um, measures. So you'll want outcome measures like uh, mortality, You'll want some process measures, like the uh, percentage of compliance with the bundles. And then you'll also want some balancing measures, like average length of stay and uh, cost per case. So we want to make sure that when you're collecting data, that you create tools that are relatively easy to use. That means collecting data is easy, and it's simple to display the data. And we want to avoid any kind of data collection that is overly burdensome, or has limited usefulness. So I like to say if I'm not going to act on data, I really have to ask, why am I collecting it? So if the data isn't teaching me something or helping me learn or guiding better action, I have to question its utility. And if data is hard to collect, teams won't collect it. So the purpose for data is really learning and taking right action. Um, in New Zealand, I heard this term that data is for light, not heat. So we in improvement don't use data to make judgments. We really use data to understand if we're learning our way to results. So are we getting the results that we intend? Is our mortality going down or less patients converting um, to more complex um, types of, of sepsis? And data is not for judgment. We want to use data to generate questions and to promote curiosity. So uh, Lloyd Provost is one of my mentors, and he says as soon as you put up a run chart, people will start asking questions. And that's another reason to use data whenever you can. And data should really inform if our changes are working and the extent of our spread. So are we ch uh, spreading the changes we're trying to spread, and at what depth? And then are we holding the gains once we've implemented these changes? So I've just made a couple of sample run charts for us to look at. One is bundle compliance, and the other one is just the um, number of spread units using four key changes. So on the number of spread units, you can see we started out with one, and it, for, there was only one unit using all four changes for the first four months. 
And then we brought on five more units. So we have a total of six. This is cumulative measure. And then we brought on 25 more units. So we're moving up in increments of five. And you can see that there are 27 units who are now using all of the four key changes that we're spreading across our facility. So we also think that you should make data public. And public means not just for staff, so don't just post it in the staff room, but it's also for patients and families to see. So patients and families are really um, encouraged when they see that we're working on improvement. And I think that they don't mind um, seeing where we were. What they get excited about is seeing where we're going and actually seeing the improvement. When you make your data public, you're saying we, we don't hide things around here. Uh, we're open to your suggestions. So you can even have a sticky pad next to the uh, data display so people can post their questions. And it really becomes a mechanism for people to ask and to discuss what's going on. So data is uh, an improvement is more than pre and post. It's a continual display over time to show the effect of the change. And that's important because if we just show pre and post data, sometimes we can't, depending on when we collected our sample, we're really not sure if improvement occurred or not. So I want to reinforce that data is for learning. And at learning sessions, which we think are a really good vehicle for spread projects, um, we want to always include data in storyboards. A storyboard is a story that teams use to tell their improvement journey. And the second question in the model for improvement is, how will we know if a change is an improvement? And the way we know that is to look at data. So anytime teams are coming together to learn together, we want them to display their data um, over time. And then, uh, even before you start a learning session, when you start, asking teams to do pre-work. In the pre-work should be data collection and data display. And this will jumpstart improvement because teams have a good sense of where they've come from and a good sense of where they uh, it's possible to go. So we want to establish a few common measures in your spread project that all of the sites and all of the units are going to collect. And that's usually an outcome measure. So you might want to look at mortality, bundle compliance, cost, and average length of stay in every single spread unit in every single facility that you spread to. So for these uh, four measures, everyone would agree, collect it, and we'll see how we're doing as we, as we go along and whether or not the changes we're making are resulting in improvement in the data. And if we don't have an agree on common vital few measures that everyone uses, it's really hard to judge the extent of spread and um, whether we're really making a difference or not. And I like to say use the data that you have. So you can improve the process of data collection, one, by beginning with what you're already collecting. It might not be the perfect measure, but if it's close enough, just start there. And then you can work to improve that. So you might um, have data available to you that is quarterly or annual data. Well, that's fine. Start where you are and then work to improve the frequency. Could we get that data every month? Could we get it every week? Could we get it every day? And maybe the data isn't as accurate as you like. It's not operationally defined well enough. But you can work to improve that as well and also the availability of the data. So as you and your teams learn together, consider including new measures that may be responsive, more responsive or more informative than the original measures you started with. So if you're starting with a, a measure that you might be collecting and reporting for accountability purposes to um, federal agencies, um, that, that might not be the best measure for improvement. But if you start with what you've got, then later as you move through the project, you can and you've learned more, you can consider adding more responsive measures um, that are also more descriptive of the changes that you're making. So in summary, it's up to you as a leader to create the expectation that data is the norm and whenever we meet, we have data. Data informs and stimulates curiosity. You're going to discover that as you use data. Be public about the data that you're collecting. Share it with staff so they know the effect of the changes that they're making and share it with patients and families to develop their confidence in the care that you give. 
continually collect your data. Collect data about the extent of the changes that you're spreading and also collect data around your outcomes or your results. And make data as easy as possible to collect and display. Good luck with your data collection, display, and measurement systems. Thank you.